Hey dudes, it's me. I'm back. I have another tutorial I'm gonna make today. I'm gonna try and make this a quick one. So three weeks ago, I made this video about how to make 2D sprites from 3D models, but I was doing a very slow way. If you watched the video, I would take screenshots of the animations and then put them in remove background, and that would take a really long time. And taking the screenshots would take a really long time as well. So I have a, a new method, a new technique, that will cut all of this out and it'll be a lot quicker to get done. And it's all thanks to this person right here. They mentioned this class Neen Hase's Sketchfab Labs experiment. And at first I was really confused by what this is. So I went to go check it out and it took me here. And this has been a game changer. You'll save so much time doing this method. So I'll leave the link in my description. You basically go here and then scroll down to screenshots. Once you find your enemy that you're gonna use, I'm gonna use this giant cockroach as an example. You copy the link here, and then you go back to this page, load 3D scene from URL, and then you paste that link in here. And now here's your cockroach. And then it works just like it would on Sketchfab, except you have this button right here. And this saves so much time. Watch. Look at that. Now your background's already removed. So. If you take screenshots of this creature, the background's already gone. So you won't have to use remove background or any of those websites. It saves you so much time. So thank you so much to Alexi4032. This method is so much better. So yeah, once you have your enemy loaded in, or enemy or weapon or whatever model you want to use, just tick the box for transparent background. And then I usually turn post-processing off. But this is the main one you want ticked. And then you can choose the resolution you want as well. I usually just leave it at 920 by 1080. And then here with this button, export screen, export So you can see here in my old video, I would literally just make it full screen and then take a screenshot like this. Then I would have to go and cut it out, which already takes a lot of time. And then once I've done all of that, then I would go to this website to remove the backgrounds one by one. And it also drops the quality of the sprite too. Yeah, patience is key. <laughs> Actually, this website's key, not patience. So now you don't have to do all of this anymore you can cut all of these steps out and just go here so once you have your background removed it's time to find your animations so we're just going to look for the idle animations now also in my last video i showed you the simple way of animating your enemies by only using 13 frames which is the default way to do it in easy fps editor but if you go and watch my latest video for enemy fsm That'll teach you how to add way more frames to your enemies' animations to make it look much smoother and much more high quality. So if you combine what I'm showing you today with this video here, you can have nice smooth enemy animations. So let's get our screenshots ready for this cockroach. First, we just need to place them as flat on the ground as we can. So then you can click here. You can look at the animation in seconds, or you can switch it to frames, which I do. So I can see there's 39 frames here. So you'll start by taking the first frame here just click export screenshot and it immediately downloads that picture for you. And there we go. You already have your sprite with the background removed, ready to go. So that's our first frame of the idle state. You can decide how many frames you would want. Um, obviously the less frames, the less smooth your animation will be, but it's nice to find a nice balance point. You don't want too many sprites in one animation, unless you do, it's up to you. I think I'll go up in fives. Yeah. So I start on zero, then I went to five, screenshot. I'll go up by 5 again, 10, screenshot, 15, there we go. So if you watched my last video, you can already see how much time I'm saving by doing it like this. 25, 30, 35, and that should do. Now we have our idle frames as well, you can check them out here. So what I do is I just name them cockroach, and then that'll be 0. Then I copy cockroach and go to my next one. Then I just paste cockroach and put 1. Paste to another time saver. Now renaming the images becomes the most time consuming part and not getting rid of the backgrounds and taking screenshots. So here we go, we have our idle animation ready. Oops, there it is. Cool, so we have those ready. Now we'll look for the next animation, which will be attack. And this animation has 17 frames, so. Maybe I'll count in twos. So we'll go zero first. Two. Six. 
he's an ugly fella. So let's see how that looks. If it looks smooth enough. There. It's good enough for now. That's his attack animation. Then we can go and name this eight, nine, Cool. So we have from the idle frames into the attack frames. Then what's next? We need, uh, let's get his death frame. This has 18 frames as well, so I'll cut in twos as well. So here's zero, two. A few moments later. And that'll be his corpse then. Then there's also flying, which is terrifying actually. Yeah, we'll just do walking for now. We'll count this in twos as well. 12 seconds later. So we got walking now. Then we need the hurt frames as well. But I think I'll just um, use one of these other animations frames for hurt. Okay, so let's name the rest of these quickly. Now, if you're wondering why I have so many sprites to use, I'm thinking, can you use that many? Yes, you can. Just check out my previous video about enemy FSM, which allows you to use as many sprites as you like. So then you aren't limited to only 13. Definitely check that video out either before or after this. Okay, this enemy will have 35 frames then. Some of my other enemies have up to a hundred, but this will be fine. Doesn't look too bad. Then the next step will be taking all these sprites out of your downloads folder. So I'll cut that and then go to my assets folder, entities, latest, and this will be enemy cockroach and paste in here. Noise. Once you have all your images ready, we'll have to just resize them. So I use a sprite, then we can just go to your images. And this is why I number them like this from zero onwards. You can just drag the first one and then it will open all of them like this. In my last video, I made a big stink about um, keeping the canvas size like even or equal, keeping it a perfect square. But I was told that it's not actually that important. As long as all your images are the same width and height, then it'll be fine. So it's no problem. So now that we have all our sprites ready here, I'm just gonna use this first frame here. Canvas size. We'll put it right at the bottom here. And then I'll just individually change each frame with this move tool. You can then click and drag the whole thing like that. So I'll just do this individually now. This might take some time. If you do move your creature around, make sure you only move it on the Y axis and not like to the left or to the right. Otherwise, it'll look strange once you add it to your project. You can see here, once I start moving the creature, it'll have a X and Y axis number. So I'm gonna click now, move it up. You can see it says minus three because I moved it to the left. So I'm just gonna move it to the right a bit until it says zero. So we just wanna change the Y axis, which is on the right there, minus 11. So I'm just gonna bring it down as much as I can and keep the X axis on zero. So there we go, that looks good. I'm just gonna do this with each frame now. So the idea is to go through each one of these frames and put them as close to the bottom of the canvas as you can without affecting the x-axis. So don't move it to the left or the right. Select this one. Just gonna move him up and this one so his legs aren't cut off. Just watch your x-axis carefully. You wanna keep it on zero. So I'm basically just looking at the tips of his legs there to make sure they are touching the bottom of the canvas without getting cut off too much. Here's where it gets tricky. For these frames, he's standing on the ground, but then for this one, he kind of flops into the air like that. So I think I'll just keep these frames the same because he's going through the air. But once he lands, I'll make sure his back is touching the bottom of the canvas, just like that. Looks good. This one can go up. So this can be a time consuming process. There's probably a faster way to do it, but I don't know how. Shh, Klaus, stop that. I'm recording a video. Okay, cool. That's all of them. So each frame is now touching the canvas bottom as much as it can, except for those few where he's flying through the air. So once that's done, then we can cut all of this away. We don't need all this blank space. So now what I do is I just check through all the frames and see how much of the side I can cut off. So there you can see his feeler goes all the way there. So I can cut up to there off. So sprite size, canvas size, and then bring it in. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just try and cut off as much canvas as I can to keep the file sizes small. And now I've cut that side off. I'll just check 
the rest of the frames to make sure nothing is cut off. Cool, so that side's done. And now we'll do the same with the right side. I'm guessing there. We'll cut up to there. Canvas size, drag it in. There we go. Now let's see if anything is cut off. And if it is cut off a little bit, just go back here and then you can drag it back and save your sprite. Cool, so there we go. Now we've cut the left and the right side of the canvas off. Now we'll just do the top as well. So now I'm gonna check the frame that goes the highest. I'm guessing it's here. Canvas size, drag. When you are doing this canvas size thing, don't actually change it here because it might affect the bottom there. And then all that time you spent moving each frame down will be a waste of time. So make sure you just drag them one by one like this and just check nothing gets cut off. Cool, now it's ready. So the important thing is once you have your screenshots ready, just make sure that they are all touching the bottom of the canvas as much as you can. Otherwise it'll look like it's floating in your project once you add it later. So now that all my cockroach sprites are ready, I'll go to export, click here, and then I'll save it in this folder I made earlier and just call it resized. And then I'll save as PNG and you can name it cockroach zero, export, and then it'll save each one of these frames numbered as well. And as an extra step, if you want to make your enemy or sprite look retro, go to sprite, sprite size, and then you can change the percentage. So maybe drop it to like 50%. And I usually choose rot sprite, looks the best. And then I'll show you how this looks now. Okay, it's done. Now you can see it's a bit more pixelated and a bit lower quality, giving it that retro look. And you can adjust the sprite size as much as you like. Maybe drop it by 25% or just play around with it. If you don't like this one, then just press Control Z to undo, and then you can try it again. But yeah, play around with that. And then if you do resize it, then just make sure to export it again. What I'll do is we have this resized folder here in the full quality. Then you can make another folder called, uh, I call it retro underscore, and then 50% because I dropped it by 50%. Then I'll save these sprites or frames as well, PNG again, and then you can name it the same thing, Cockroach Zero. Save, export, agree. And then here we go. There's your full size screenshots you got earlier. Here's the resized ones in full quality. And then here's my retro looking ones dropped by 50%. Either use your resized ones or your retro ones and then take these sprites and go check out my enemy FSM tutorial and that will show you how to use these sprites and add them to uh, your project. Thanks for watching and go watch my other video now. Thanks.